Hey everyone, I'm Brandon and welcome to CodeBuff launch week day four ish, a little bit more. But uh, I have something really cool here to show you, and I'm sure you're already wondering what the heck this is. This is just a map of SF, but it's a cyberpunk map, and it's actually powered by, you guessed it, uh, CodeBuff. I actually was able to configure CodeBuff to run in a uh, web app, and I'm about to show you how it works. This is all powered by our new SDK, which is uh, the topic of today's launch. Um, this is really exciting because it's going to let you do things like this. You have this Next.js app over here, and uh, I'm able to just go and tell CodeBuff to do something. So here I'm saying, find and add more pins of interesting places to this map for me to explore. Pick out the coolest landmarks around the world and reimagine how they might end up here in the next 50 years. So I'm just going to send that. Um, you know, CodeBuff is going to do all the usual CodeBuff things uh, with a little bit of a twist. But before we get into that, let me just kind of walk you through this really cool map. So this is just a map of SF, but I've like messed with the contrast, like saturation, made it, give it a very like cyberpunky kind of vibe. And you can see here we already have a few locations, right? I mean, like what what happened to make <laughs> the mission turn into an underground network um, of street art? <laughs> we'll see. You can see here on the on the right that we're doing a bunch of stuff over here, right? Um, we have this orchestrator, we have uh, an extract agent, like what's going on here? Let me walk you through uh, with a quick um, kind of video to the animation to show you what's what's happening here. And then we'll come right back here to show you the end result. So we start off with the user request, right? And we send it over to an orchestration agent. Uh, this is very similar to the base agent in normal CodeBuff. It's responsible for handling kind of like sending stuff to different agents. So what are the different agents? Well, one of them is going to be this um, ETL kind of pipeline, right? There's um, a manager whose job is to send it to an extract agent, transform agent, and then load agent. And, you know, why this particular thing? Uh, it turns out that, you know, a lot of workflows and, and you know, data stuff re uh, relies on this kind of like structure, right? Where the first uh, agent here uh, and it's a, is an extract. And its job is to take not only the uh, incoming request, but do web searches, many of them actually over the internet to pull in information. And then it takes all of that and dumps it over to a transform agent. And its job is basically to take all of that data and convert it into a format that's reasonably, you know, understandable, right? You, know, you don't want to send just, you know, mountains of like stuff um, that's not very useful. So it's going to do that. And then finally, the loading step is going to um, take all of that clean data and then change it around in order to be most useful. And kind of like it's just going to be sending the data right back over to Buffy. And then, of course, what are we going to do with all of this like data? In this particular case, um, very pristine um, information about, you know, landmarks around the world. We're going to send that over to the React specialist here. Who's gonna, whose job is then just to focus on actually creating the React components and putting that into the map. Okay, so that's the animation, but I wanna show you actually how it's all done. Like, this is a really complex thing, right? You're talking about agents that spawn each other, that you know run in different paths, um, and how do you make sure they all stay together? Um, there's a lot of spaghetti code that is very easy to write. But, you know, thankfully we have the uh, CodeBuff framework uh, for agents that mixes in really, really nicely with the SDK. So when you build an agent uh, in CodeBuff, you know, you've probably seen this before, but basically uh, you can define it all in one single file here. And so in this case, there's an orchestrator agent. It's able to call a few of these different agents. There's the builder that I talked about, the ETL manager, and then just a few other like CodeBuff based uh, agents here. Uh, it has instructions. It's able to kind of like go through and um, tell you know tell these different agents what it wants to do. Um, but in this particular case, it's just routing, right? Uh, I won't go into too much detail about all of these, but you should know that basically the we have an ETL manager that you know basically is responsible for passing the different um, you know going through the the extract transform load step. But what's actually really interesting is that this agent doesn't really even, it's not really a traditional agent in, you know, this is its whole like prompting, right? And that's because, um, you know, it's a, it's basically following these three steps. One, do extract agent stuff, two, do um, transform stuff, and then three, do load stuff. 
and each of those is calling the different agents over here, extract, uh, transform, and load, to be able to actually you know go and do all these things. Okay, and of course we have our builder agent that actually does the coding. So that's really all of it. But um, the key part of all of this is that these exact same definitions and exact same structure that you're familiar with uh, when you're using and building your own custom agents works super nicely with the SDK. So in here, the SDK just works as uh, you import this client and you just create a new one and you give it the directory that you want to be in, you know, any errors, anything you can kind of handle here with, along with your API key. Okay, <clears throat> uh, and then you can just go to the website to get the API, API key. And then after that, um, you can go ahead and instantiate it through, um, oops, uh, sorry, you can get a client uh, that grabs it, um, the one that you just created. And then you're able to call <clears throat> client.run. And that is going to be able to pull in the agent that you uh, want to kind of refer to, start off with. This uh, is again the equivalent of like talking to Buffy, the base agent uh, on on normal CodeBuff. Uh, pass in the definitions, right? So that's what it has access to. Um, the message that you have, uh, and then we'll get back to this in a second. But then uh, we give you these handlers that will basically be able to fire off anytime a, a certain event has happened. So, like for example, when um, sub agents start and finish, right? When there's like agent texts to get, uh, to deal with. Uh, it's all it's all kind of really, really nicely kind of thrown in there. You can just kind of react to anything you need from this handler uh, and then, you know, go off and be on your way. In this particular case, you know, in the back end, we're just kind of forwarding back to the client uh, what's happening. Okay, and then uh, the, ba the thing I want to go back to was right here, which is this run, right? So every time this runs, we pass back all of the state that the uh, the agent um, has gone through, right? This client uh, taken, takes this message with all these parameters and then generates this result back for you. And that result, you can just pass right back in the next time for, um, for the next basically call, right? And, um, and so in this particular case, I'm actually, you know, because this is a client server model, we're actually sending this back over to the um, server or sorry, to the client, who will then cache it and then send it back. So you can do that, you can sort in a database, it's kind of your choice of what to do. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all it is. Like all this other stuff is just a couple of like handlers and catch catches. Uh, and then I'm able to just forward it right back to my client who can then handle it. So, so yeah, it's really just like, you know, two key functions and then the usual um, agent, uh, custom agents that I have um, that run in the same way that I run my normal code buff. All right, so it's uh, finished, and here are my locations. <laughs> in Guazu Falls? Hmm, interesting. So it recycles urban runoff. Rainbow holograms, okay. <laughs> so some of these places are inspired by real places. I guess this kind of makes sense because it's like downtown, huh? But uh, yeah, so this is kind of like, hopefully you could see it. Let me just kind of go through all of this so you can kind of see what happened. <clears throat> so this was just one go, um, like I said earlier, right? The orchestrator runs, it decides it needs to spawn the extract step, right? The extract manager, which really just is a shim for the extract agent. It runs, it does a bunch of stuff like like gathering <laughs> a cultural evolution and demographic trends for 2075. I don't know who can predict that far in advance. Then it changes, it calls the transform step, which will, you know, normalize all of these different landmarks and all these different places. And then finally the load step, which would filter out for like the best aspects of this whole thing. So then that finally gets passed back to the orchestrator, which by this point still has a very pristine context window. It just gets back essentially all of the stuff that a load agent, only that stuff that it cares about. And then finally hands off to, uh, to the React agent here to go ahead and just generate the, the stuff uh, <laughs> bug here. But basically in the middle, the React agent ran and successfully created this 
And then these are all the different landmarks. Neo Taj Mahal. <laughs> oh, is this the Neo Taj Mahal? Oh, that's a Sydney Opera Bay. Wow. Man, imagine that. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. This is a quick demo, I guess, of how all of these agents can be kind of put together and how you can push them into different workflows that benefit your particular needs. So that's it. I launch uh, week day four-ish SDK. Let us know how you think about it. We'll drop a link. It's just at codebuff slash SDK on NPM. So that's it. And uh, stick around for launch week day five as we round it out. It's going to be really exciting. All right. Thanks. Bye.